Greetings everyone, welcome to the channel. We are the Lion Gaming Crew and in this Diablo 3 non-seasonal build guide video, we're going to be taking a look at the new and improved Legacy of Dream set available now in both softcore and hardcore for non-seasonal on PS4 slash PS5 and Nintendo Switch consoles. So if you're looking for any of the gear shown in this video, all you need to do is hit that link in the description, sign up for Discord if you're not already a member, and uh, when you land in Discord, you are going to need to assign yourself a role. After you do that, find the proper channel according to the console you play on and submit a request. Now, please note, it may take up to 24 hours to fulfill your request, so please be patient. But other than that, though, big special shout out to each and every single one of my subscribers and each and every single member of the Discord community. So without you guys' support, literally none of this would be possible. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into this build guide. So for the update to this Legacy of Dreams build, we have included the updated Remorseless, which just saw an update with patch 2.74 to buff the legendary bonus, which now reads, while both Wrath of the Berserker and Call of the Ancients are active, Hammer of the Ancients deals 800% increased damage. Now we also put a sanctified affix from the current season on there, which reads Hammer of the Ancients hits in all directions around the Barbarian, Every 10th cast of Hammer of the Ancients unleashes a pow powerful shockwave. We also included a Season 25 Soul Shard affix, which reads, When you kill an enemy, you deal the damage done by the death blow to all enemies within 25 yards. Pets and followers cannot trigger this effect. Now, it is also infused with the Gem of East. You're going to get 8,000 experience per kill, and it is dealing 1,199,000 damage per second. Not too bad. Moving on into the first piece of the Legacy of Dream set, we're picking up the Stone Gauntlets. These have 5,520 strength, 234 to resist all elements, 65% life, 220% critical hit damage, 14% critical hit chance, 23,936 life per hit, the augment for 750 additional strength, 70% gold from monsters, 20% chance to immobilize on hit, and reduces the damage of enemies hit by 25% for 5 seconds. The legendary bonus is getting hit increases your armor by 50%, but reduces your movement speed by 15% and attack speed by 20%. This effect stacks up to 5 times, you don't have to worry about that proccing because you're never ever going to get hit. We also have another soul shard affix which reads killing an elite enemy reduces all your active cooldowns by 5 seconds. 27.7% for the reduced cooldown of all skills and the resource cost reduction. Everything is set for level 1 Primal Ancient, by the way. Moving on into the shoulders. These are the Fury of the Ancients. Slightly more strength than the gloves. Other than that, though, pretty much identical. The legendary bonus, which reads Call of the Ancients, gains the effect of the Ancients' Fury Rune, and your Ancients attack 100% faster. Everything else is pretty much identical to the gloves, so let's move on to the chest. We are picking up the Cinder Coat, which the legendary bonus reads, reduce the resource cost of fire skills by 30%, slightly more strength than the shoulders and gloves, but other than that, pretty much identical. So let's move on to the helm. Now this one has a lower strength value, but has increased critical hit damage and critical hit chance, also increased percent life, coming at 126% thanks to the amethyst and the other affixes. You're also getting 17,000 life after each kill, and 38,000 life from health potions and globes. Very nice indeed. 1,000 to all stats. It is infused with that red soul shard, so you're going to periodically struggle for control, unleashing a ring of fire that inflicts 20,000% weapon damage to enemies that passes through. Now, because this is the Leor Leoric's crown, the legendary bonus increases the effect of any gem socketed into your helm by 100%, but this effect does not apply to legendary gems. We don't need it to apply to that red soul shard, we just need it to apply to those amethysts to give us extra percent life. 35.0% for the reduced cooldown of all skills, 27.7% for that resource cost reduction. Moving on into the amulet, this is a rare level 1 amulet, the PvP amulet to be exact, buffing all main stats, you get 7000 regular damage, cold fire percent damage, you get 8000 to strength, dex, and intelligence, 5000 to vitality, 80% attack speed, 10% critical hit chance, you get 23,000 life per hit, 200% damage to all barbarian skills, it ignores durability loss, and you get two movement speed increases, one after killing the elite pack, and the other after picking up a health globe. Now this also has a bunch of those season 25 soul shard affixes, the highlighted ones being, 
killing an elite enemy pulls all enemies within 40 yards where the elite died. That is super awesome. When you critically hit an enemy, you increase the attack speed of all players by 5% for 5 seconds, max 10 stacks. That kind of cancels out the stone gauntlets just in case you do get hit. You gain an additional ref progress orb when you kill an elite pack. Those are just a couple of those season 25 soul shard affixes. There's a bunch of them on here, so pretty decent all around for sure. The damage of Hammer of the Ancients is increased by 800% and it returns 25 fury if it hits 3 or fewer enemies. Another legendary bonus we assigned on here to really get our Hammer of the Ancients completely rocking with a total damage increase of 1600% just from the Remorseless and that legendary bonus on the amulet. Now you're also getting the Rampage passive which is pretty nice. 56.9% for the reduced cooldown of all skills. 46.8% for the reduce all resource costs, 60% damage to the enemies, and 25% movement speed increase. Moving on into the bracers. These are the bracers of the first men, again buffing our hammer of the ancients. By buffing it to fi attack 50% faster and deal 500% increased damage. So now our grand total is at 2100% just off these three pieces we've looked at so far. Absolute insanity. 75% magic item find. Other than that though, pretty much identical, so let's move on to the offhand. We are picking up the Echoing Fury, dealing 443,000 damage per second. This is uh, pretty good though. It's got regular damage, cold, fire, percent, increased attack speed, percent critical chance, life per hit, 20% chance to fear on hit. You get one to maximum damage per paragon level up to 800, so if you're level 800 paragon, you're getting 800 extra damage. You also get the same two movement speed increases after killing an elite pack and picking up a health globe. Not too bad at all. The first ring is the test ring 516 for immortality, so you're never ever going to die while wearing this ring. It's got regular damage, cold, fire, percent damage, percent attack speed, percent critical at chance, life per hit, 200% damage to all barb skills. You get 2434 life per fury spent. You get that augment for 750 strength. Gold health pickup radius is increased by 100 yards, ignores durability loss, same two movement speed increases as shown on the offhand and the amulet, and all of the legendary bonuses from the gems. Reduced cooldown of all skills and resource cost reduction is both at 46.8%, not too bad. The second ring is the 1 billion physical skill damage ring. This one also has regular damage, cold, fire, percent, percent attack speed, percent critical at chance, life per hit, percent damage to all barb skills, and it also ignores their ability loss. Same two movement speed increases and the legendary bonuses from the gems. You get 56.9% for cooldown of all skills. It increases fury set point by 10, reduces all resource costs by 46.8%, chance to deal 144% area damage on hit, and you get a 35% chance to inflict bleed for both 21,000 to 27,000 regular damage and 400% weapon damage, both over five seconds and 60% damage to the enemies. I mean, that's a, that's crazy. That's a lot to read right there, man. That's, that's insane. All right, moving on to the boots. These are the illusionary boots. Over 9,000 strength, counting the augment. 65% life. It's got life per hit. You got 70% gold from monsters. 75% magic item find, bringing that grand total to 150%. The legendary bonus, which reads you may move unhindered through enemies. 27.7% for the cooldown of all skills and the resource cost reduction. Moving on into the pants. Now, this, I know this is a set piece, but don't worry. The Legacy of Dreams only affects you when you actually have a full set bonus, and we don't have a set bonus. And there really isn't any good pants for the Barbarian, so we just threw on the uh, Blackthorns Jousting Mail, you know, just to have a little, you know, it's cool to have the uh, codename Tundra on there. And it's just, it's a, it's a cool pair of pants, man. Can't complain. Other than that, though, pretty much identical to all the other pieces of gear, so let's move on to the belt. For the belt, we're picking up Chiliax Chain for the legendary bonus, which reads using Warcry increases the movement speed for you and all allies affected by 40% for 10 seconds. You get the Unforgiving Weapons Master and Berserker Rage Passive. Pretty good indeed. Over 7,000 strength, counting the augment. 35% gold from monsters. 15.0% for the reduced cooldown of all skills and the reduce all resource costs. So not too bad. Moving on into the skills, for the X ability and the tactic skill tree, we're picking up Warcry with the rune charge, R2, main damage dealing attack in the secondary skill tree, we're picking up Hammer of the Ancients with the rune smash, 
square ability for some mobility <laughs> like how I, that rhymes you know get it mobility square ability oh well it's uh in the defensive skill tree sprint with the rune marathon triangle ability in the rage skill tree we're picking up wrath of the berserker with the rune insanity circle ability again in that rage skill tree we're picking up call of the ancients with the rune the council rises and finally for even more mobility we're picking up furious charge with the rune dreadnought and the might skill tree Passives are as follows, Pound of Flesh, Erd than Might, Inspiring Presence, and Brawler. Cube powers being Blade of the Tribes, Krem's Buff Belt, and the Stone of Jordan Ring. Quickly touching on Paragon, everything into Vitality. For the offensive stats, everything into Attack Speed, then you can flush out the rest. For the defensive stats, Life and Armor first, then focus on the rest. For the Utility Skill Tree, Area Damage first, then the rest can be flushed out. Quickly touching on our follower, we are using the updated Enchantress follower who is rocking the Cosmic set, which features the Spolders of Zakura and the Nemesis Bracers. Both so our items become indestructible, and when every time we hit a shrine and a pylon, it'll spawn an enemy champion. We are using the token that our follower cannot die. That is very crucial, especially when pushing GR150s. Even though they have the test ring 516 for immortality, you just, you never know, you know? It, something could happen. So the skills we are using are Temporal Pulse, Prophetic Harmony, Powered Shield, and Focused Mind. Quickly going over the final numbers, then we'll wrap this video up doing three runs of a Greater Rift 150, 108,000 for our strength value, Armor is pretty high at 167,000, but if you want to try to get it to 99% using your Paragon points, by all means. Damage is at 371 billion, right in that sweet spot. Damage increased by skills is showing a value of 25%. Bonus damage to elites is at 180%. Tax per second is at 5, thanks to the base of the weapon, which is the Professional Russian Fast Sword. Tax speed increase is showing a huge value at 46%. Critical hit chance and critical hit damage both capped at their respective values. Area damage is at 144%. Quote on reduction, man, 99.76%. Ooh wee, baby. Physical, fire, lightning, and cold are all at 1 billion, thanks to using the 1 billion physical skill damage ring and the Stone of Jordan ring in the cube. Moving on now into the defensive stats. Damage reduction is at 97.95%. Pretty good in my book. Our resistances are all at 87.91% across the board. Moving on down into the life bonus, 579% uh, for total life bonus, not too bad. Life per second is at 285,000. Life per kill, 17,000. Life per hit, 287,000. These are just massive, massive values right here. Life per fury spent is at 2,434. Health globe healing bonus is at 38,000. Bonus to gold slash globe radius set for 100 yards. Fury cost reduction is at 98.94%. Movement speed is at like 25%, but because we got, you know, a sprint active, it's showing a higher value. Gold find is at 651%. Magic item find is at 150%. And finally, bonus experience per kill set for 8,000. So with all of that gone over, let's go ahead and run into some rifts, man. So this build is a lot of fun. It's pretty potent. It does massive, massive, massive damage. And the uh, massive damage increase is both because of the Hammer of the Ancient Sanctified Affix, which just, it just totally takes this build and just cranks it up to 10. Because every, every time you, uh, every 10th cast of Hammer of the Ancients is going to unleash a huge, massive shockwave that literally hits enemies that are like, I don't even know how far, but they're, yeah, it, do, it does damage, man. And so yeah, you basically just want to channel your Hammer of the Ancients. So you want to make sure you're using all your other abilities, make sure Wrath of the Berserker and Call of the Ancients is active so you get increased damage. Now, you don't have to make sure that they're active. Your damage output is going to be good, even if you forget to maintain those. So this build does have a little bit of maintenance because you do have to make, you know, you don't have to, but it is advised to keep Hammer of the Ancients and, or sorry, Call of the Ancients and a Wrath of the Berserker active at all times. But other than that though, it's pretty much easy. You just, you can Furious Charge around pretty quickly. I mean, you can spam it because of the cooldown reduction and resource cost reduction being so high. And with the Rune Dreadnought on there, you have three charges. So you're rarely ever going to find yourself 
completely running out of charges. Usually by the time you cast your second, when it hits, goes down to your second charge, you're going to have that third one replenished. So I've never really come into a time where I've completely ran out of my, uh, my Furious Charge ability. So, you know, use it as much as you want. You can spam it. You can literally click on it over and over and over again without having to worry about it running out, which is pretty great, which means really fast mobility. And the clear speeds are pretty uh, consistent. All usually right around like a minute and a half to two minutes. I've done quite a lot of testing. Are we not going to be able to talk to Ursha? Oh, man, we can't talk to Urshi, but that's okay. I think that clear speed was like right around a minute 45. So let's just go ahead and jump into another one here. Yeah, so um, build, this is a... Uh, I mean, it can be a beginner build. Like, I, I wouldn't say it's like right up there with like the Wrath of the Waste. Um, at, like, that's like my number one recommend recommendation for beginners who are trying the Barbarian for the first time. Because it's so easy. I mean, you just roll one around all over the place. This one is pretty easy too, though. Um, once you get your hotkeys like figured out and you know, you just go around and smash stuff with your giant hammer. I mean, it's pretty awesome. And because of the patch to the Remorseless in patch 2.74, and like everything else giving us over like 2000 percent increased damage to hammer of the ancients like literally it's going to one shot everything all content in this game can be achieved using this set like literally when i mean all content i mean all content you can smash through the campaign you can do bounties you can do greater rift 150s you can do petrified screams you can you can this thing can handle it all so it's awesome and it is good for multiplayer too because you have the chiliax chain on there so if you want to be more of a support role you can uh, use your chiliax chain war cry ability right at the beginning of a rift and give your party members increased movement speed for 10 seconds which is nice and that 40 percent movement speed increase doesn't sound like a lot but when you have uh characters you know like the monk who has that passive that gets 10 percent increased movement speed you got the demon hunter who can use uh, shadow power with the rune shadow glide and smoke screen with the rune displacement so there's a lot of other abilities that can really benefit from that so you can be a team player if you want to or you can just solo the shit out of rifts, you know, it's really up to you. That's why I like the Barbarian, that's why I like the Legacy of Dreams builds as well. Because they offer a lot of versatility and a lot of options when it comes to assembling your build. And that's what this modded gear is all about. It's about versatility and it's about playing however you want, you know, because uh, with mods, any, any skill combination, anything like that, you know, is going to be pretty much, you know it's gonna be very very you know easy to you know i don't i can't find the word man i'm trying to think of this word but i can't think of it man so it is, you just you guys get it though man like and any way you guys want to rock this build i'm pretty sure it's gonna work for you and i have no doubt that you're gonna have a fun time while doing it man so if you're looking for a new barbarian build to check out and uh, you just want to try something new and you want to try a sanctified ethics then definitely recommend the legacy of dreams man we're gonna try to put more sanctified ethicses on a lot more of our builds moving forward we do have a small list of them available like if you want to check them out on discord uh we are working you know to add more we want to get all of the builds to have sanctified fx's on them here pretty soon so expect that here in the near future i do have a lot of work i still have to do i still need to update all of the seasonal builds and then you know obviously add those sanctified fx's to the non-seasonal builds so it might take a little bit of time but you know we're, we're here for it man we're gonna keep updating these builds until they're damn near perfect it might take us a little bit of time but you know what though we're getting closer every time i make one of these updated build guide videos i can really see the difference when i go back and i watch the first video compared to these updated videos i'm like okay yeah yeah there is there's a big change there so we are learning more and more every single day, which is nice, so yeah, um, there's not much else I can really say about this build though, it's a lot of fun, it's got uh, consistent clear speeds, it's got lots of damage, it's got high mobility, so there really isn't a lot of negatives to this build, I mean it's, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like some negatives to kind of point out here, but like, I can't really, I mean resistances are good, I mean yeah, it's pretty much checking all the boxes if you will, so. Yeah, definitely recommend checking it out. And again, if you're looking for any of the gear shown in this video, all you need to do is hit that link, man. Sign up for Discord, place a request, and you know, check it out. Leave me some feedback too, man. I always appreciate getting some feedback. And finally, I'd ask if y'all enjoyed this video, please let me know by there dropping a like or maybe even dropping a comment if you really, really enjoyed it. And if you're new here and you like the content style of these videos, then while you're down there, maybe even consider hitting that subscribe button. So that is the best way to push my channel to more users just like you. And again, thank you all for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you made it all the way till the end, you're an absolute legend, and I really appreciate your support. 
and I hope to catch you all in a future video coming out soon. Stay safe, stay happy, and last but not least, stay gaming, my friends. Lion Gaming Crew, signing out.